on your marks. Power athletics. The program's absolutely grown so much. Set. It's exploded. So exciting to see new athletes come out of the woodwork, to see existing athletes step up because they just want to be part of this program and part of Tokyo 2020. Townsville, Australia, home of the 2019 Oceania Athletics Championships. It's a massive event with over 700 able-bodied and para-athletes from 22 countries. Amongst the 98 strong New Zealand team here, there are just seven para-athletes, each of them on their own journey, but all of them striving to be part of the Tokyo 2020 Paralympic Games. Guiding them on their journey, is veteran coach Raylene Bates, also known as Mama Bear. There's two things about Oceania Champs this year. One is it's a really good development championship event for our athletes going into a World Champs or a Paralympics, Olympic Games. Secondly, for some of our new athletes, it is part of a pathway for World Champs in 2019 and for Tokyo 2020. Not all of our para-athletes are here. Some of them are already experienced. Some of them, it doesn't fit their program to be here. They've already done other events earlier in the year and they've already qualified. But the key athletes we wanted here are here. Qualifying for the Tokyo 2020 Paralympics is complicated. Slots are allocated by World Para-Athletics. A top four ranked athlete at the 2019 World Champs will obtain one slot, an A qualifier. World Para-Athletics then establish a 12-month qualification system, ranking the next top six athletes a B qualifier. For Kiwi athletes, a B qualifier can be the difference between getting funded to compete or not. They all have their own unique personalities and backstories. So who are these seven athletes? I'm Joshua James Flush. I'm 18 years old. I'm from Cairns originally and I'm a paralong jumper. I've been with New Zealand Athletics going on two years now, after the switch from Aussie Athletics. New Zealand Athletics supports paras a lot more and there's a lot more opportunities. And New Zealand feels more like home because my parents are Kiwi as well. T20 is an intellectual impairment, which is like a missing chromosome in your brain. It's a genetic defect for me. On the physical side, of I was born with a genetic defect called Sherman's kyphosis, which is a curvature of the spine. When I was younger, it used to cause a lot of pain, but I guess you revolve your training and you learn to adapt. And slowly, in the last year or so, it's starting to um, straighten up, which is good. Josh has already jumped a qualifier to get to the world champs. His goal now is to be able to hit a jump that guarantees his place in Tokyo. We'd love to qualify for Tokyo next year. So we're looking to... We're looking for that A qualifier. We're a little bit off. We're about 27 metres off, but I reckon we got it in us. Three years ago, at the Rio 2016 Paralympics, New Zealand had their most successful track and field team ever, with a total of three gold, two silver and four bronze. One of those athletes in Rio was silver medalist Holly Robinson. She's now back for her third campaign. I'm pretty sick of settling for silver and bronze, so I'd, I would really like that top spot. And I'm not afraid to say it, I want to fight for that, and I know I'm capable of it. It's a pretty short story around my disability. I was born without my arm. I'm a twin. My brother has all four limbs. <laughs> I have three limbs. Growing up, I did have a lot of self-conscious issues. Always hide my arm behind my back. I'd always, you know, not want to do things because I was, had this fear of people judging me because of who I was. There was a lot of underestimation of my ability, but I found through sport that I could really thrive. Sort of grew my confidence from sport, knowing that I could. Post-2017, 
She's worked with trying to overcome her Achilles injury. Anybody that has an injury like she sustained, there's a lot of pressure on you, not just from the outside world, but personal pressure as well. But she's worked very, very hard. She's fitter and stronger than she's ever been. And in the last 12 months, she broke the world record at the Australian Track and Field Champs. It's given her a huge boost. I did have an amazing season, actually, like finished off with a world record is always a pretty big positive. But then that sets the expectations even higher for myself, like I've got a PB of 45.73 now, and before that it was only 43 metres. Holly has already qualified for the world champs. This event is all about working on technique. We can't throw PBs every time. Now we go through stages where we're training really hard and at the moment we're in a really heavy phase of training so it makes it hard to actually throw well because your body is just tired, it's knackered. So for us here it's more about technical things and working on a few goals that we had in terms of our runway. So now for us it's just getting that end part and that javelin's going to fly. Classification is a big part of para sport. Basically, it means that people with similar disabilities compete against each other. At an event like this, several classifications are lumped together in the same event, which can seem super confusing. But basically, it just means that winners are worked out through their timings rather than their actual placings. I'm Jess Dillon, and I'm from Dunedin. I have been competing in Paralympic athletics for about 12 years. My event is seated shot put. My classification is F34, so that means two limbs are affected, which is cerebral palsy type class. I often compete against people who have had strokes or some kind of coordination with their muscles and weaknesses. Jess uses a specialised throwing frame to compete. Throwing frame is a square seat. It's tied down to the ground, so when I move, it won't topple over. I've got a pole on my left side, so I pull and with some momentum and technique. The way you sit on it, it's all very unique to the athlete. I can't really bend my legs very far, so I've got to have a foot plate and some straps. This comp is really important because I haven't had much competition in the lead up to qualifying for World Champs, and this is just to see where I'm at. Jess has had a really rocky two years. She broke a leg in two places in May 2018, and then actually broke it again in November last year. But she's back throwing mid seven metres, which is amazing. She's still ranked number four in the world off those performances. Jess was part of the para athletics team of just five at the London 2012 Paralympics. Now the squad boasts 19 athletes, thanks in part to a shift to an inclusive program under Athletics New Zealand. One of the reasons athletics actually became an integrated program was we had to. Going into World Champs in 2015, we didn't have very much funding at all. So the only way we could make this program grow was to actually fund it as a program, rather individual athletes, and incorporate it with the able-bodied program. Use the resources, use the coaching, shared facilities, shared programs. And it was a manoeuvre that worked. We went into Rio with eight athletes, and because of the results of the eight athletes gaining nine medals, we had 185% increase in funding. That success also inspired a new wave of athletes. With the marketing that was done around the Paralympic Games and also with the time schedule and the television schedule, we were really lucky that it exposed New Zealanders to para sport. And post that, we have children out there saying, you know, we want to have a go, we want to have a go. I've never experienced anything like it before. 2016, I met my coach at the ACC Paralympic Open Day. And basically from that the following week, I was training, haven't stopped since. So I competed through secondary school my last year. So I hold three records in shot put, discus and javelin. My name's Ben Sui Masebe. Uh, people know me as Benza. I am from Auckland, New Zealand, Mangere Bridge. 
I compete in Shopper and my class is F37. My disability is uh, hemiplegia. I think a form of cerebral palsy affects one half of my body. In my case, it's left side. And how it affects life, it just makes things just a little bit harder, I suppose. And saying that, I just always know that it's a part of you. It doesn't define you. Oh, Benza, <laughs> he's great. A very new athlete, only just being internationally classified in 2018. So the Oceania Champs are a really important stepping stone for Ben. One, because he's chasing a big qualifier for the World Champs, but secondly, he's actually been able to spend some time with Marty Jackson, the Australian shot putter, and actually learn what it's like to be a top international athlete. And that's been by the association with his coach, John Eden. Uh, John, yeah, yeah, that guy, Sione. Yeah, I found him in a bar, seeing karaoke. So I just said, oh, he looks like he's got one leg, so he might be a para, and he turned out to be a para coach. You three would be, have to have the worst mouths of any athletes I've ever coached. What? You swear all the time. Trash. Yeah. This one, you, he's the king. Mate. He's who? the king, you. I only say prayers. <laughs> I only say prayers, mate. John is a former Paralympian himself. He knows the dedication that is required. So Ben has a very high work ethic. It comes from his day job. He starts work at what, five o'clock in the morning and finishes about one. And then he comes to training and he puts in all the time. And I think it comes back from my background as an athlete. Um, I believe that we're, we're athletes and we train and to get the rewards, we have to train just as hard as anyone else. And Ben fits into that category. Ben needs a good put. His current results are outside of a B qualifier. If he doesn't make the mark, he will have to fund his own way to Dubai. Literally thousands of dollars to go. I'm gonna work on today, Ben, just getting that left foot down, mate. Eh? Getting your foot down, letting it just feel the ground, let the ground come to you, rather That's than you chasing the ground. Don't, don't overthink it, eh? Yeah, let it happen. Think. It's all a technical thing, eh? But in saying that, uh, you have to feel certain things and as someone with CP, you uh, can't feel half of your body. So, um, yeah, your coach is telling you, uh, you have to do this, and when you that happens, you got to do this. But you can't feel the first step, so it's kind of a guessing game sometimes. And hopefully, by repetition, by putting in the 10,000 hours, it'll come to a point where you can feel it in your own weird little way, I suppose. For athletes like Ben, this is their first taste of an event this size. It's a chance for Athletics New Zealand to see how he copes. It provides a village setting, which is an opportunity to have to live in that environment where they've got to share, where they've got to be considerate of others, where they've actually got to look after themselves as well. And secondly, it's a full international meeting, so therefore they've got to go through cool rooms, they've got to be ready, they've got to make sure that they've got their numbers, their uniforms. The discipline around actually running the events is top notch. It's a world-class standard. Some of the athletes haven't been exposed to those longer cool rooms or having to sit round and wait in bigger fields, for instance. It's very important for us in developing an athlete to go on to a world championship event. One of the new athletes heading to the Dubai World Champs is Lisa Adams, sister to NBA basketballer Stephen Adams and Olympic gold medalist Dame Valerie Adams who also happens to be Lisa's coach. The mindset and the, the kind of determination that we share as a family and work ethic, we're blessed to get it from our dad. I was diagnosed with mild cerebral palsy, left hemiplegia. That's my medical diagnosis. I'm impaired on the entire left side of my body. My range of movement's affected. My muscles, growth, tone, all of that is affected coordination. I guess the easiest way to explain it is your brain's telling you to do something and my messages kind of travel distorted or not at all. The rise has been swift. Lisa broke the world record earlier this year. She's only been competing for 18 months. From the story of us first contacting Lisa and saying how about having a go to where she is today has been remarkable. She's got a great support team around her with Val and Scott. And we're expecting some really big things of her, especially for World Champs and Tokyo. The athletics team at the Oceania Champs is the largest Kiwi team to ever go abroad. 
balancing both the needs of the Olympic and Paralympic programs is Scott Goodman. I was originally got involved with parasport in Australia in the early 1990s. Very much early days with the first nationals there, which were separate disability nationals to able-bodied nationals. And over a three or four year period, we were able to work with Athletics Australia to get uh, para, or we call it athletes with disabilities at that time, events included onto the same program. Particularly once Australia got awarded the Sydney Olympics and Paralympics, and I'm you know, really proud now that the level of inclusion and acceptance now at these type of events in Australia and New Zealand was a sort of the pinnacle of that because of the Oceania area. It'll bring in athletes from uh, the smaller Oceania countries, Papua New Guinea, Fiji, are all bringing para-athletes to this event. So uh, I think it helps the whole profile of the area to evolve. On your mark, set. It's competition day. Holly's up first for the para-athletes. For her, it's all about fine-tuning for the world champs. For quite a while, I was quite scared to compete just because of the outcome. I was so focused, like, need to have a good throw. And so I've worked a lot with my mental skills trainer on the how. So what is my process of being able to throw far? I had a few key things. One of them was turn, one of them was stay closed. Next up, we have Yeah, I'll throw that one, I think. Me and Batesy, she's always there for me during comps, so she'll give me feedback. Usually I know what I'm doing, right or wrong, and so it's good for me just to see her, and she'll be like, this is what you did, just work on this, and so it gives me a bit more of a direction. Samantha, followed by Holly, the competition. Came through the comp with a bit of distractions outside of the comp, things happening, hurdles on, lots of stop and starting, which I hadn't had in a while. So that was a really positive for us, being able to see the distraction was there, but then refocus on what I needed to do for my technique. thinking the same thing over and over, like what you're going to do from start, from your run up, right to when you take off from the board. You're going to attack it the first couple of goes and you're going to back it off and then you're going to see if you're going to get the crowd into it or not. You just, it all depends on the body, how you feel. Josh is looking to jump the A qualifying standard. At this event, the size of the field is small. So there's less time to recover between jumps. Where well, there's only four or five people competing in your event, you gotta, you don't have time to relax in between jumps and really think. Towards the end of the competition, I got really tired, especially on my sixth jump. Pretty good comp. My two biggest jumps were a 6.15 and a 6.18. A PB is 6.40, so we're about we were about 20 centimetres off it today, which isn't huge. It's just, uh, just depending how you're landing is where you lose it. Nineteen-year-old Libby Likas is a newcomer to para athletics. Here she gets to compete against other athletes with cerebral palsy. I'm a T37, so one half the body is weak. So my right side is weak. Not weaker than my left, but. It's just what I've got to deal with. One of the challenges she has to overcome while running is spasticity in her limbs. It's an everything game. It kind of, it all depends on the day um, and how my actual body is feeling. Um, it's very much a mental thing. I mean, <laughs> I get anxious all the time and, you know, things go everywhere, but I'm usually pretty fine. It's hard to keep it. Yeah, no, but you know, now you've done all those lovely squats and things, you've, you've built yourself up there, so you've got a lot more strength in the, through that area. Square it up there, that's good. Now, remember, hips, hips a little bit. That's it, perfect. Off you go. These competitions we've been working on her strength because she is very weak down her right-hand side. 
We're working a lot on her, her posture, on holding herself, on how she strikes the ground with her bad leg and how she strikes the ground with her good leg once the bad leg has touched and then she has to come through, so it's the speed she has to come through. On your mind. Alexandra Eads, Australia. Libby Lekis, New Zealand, and Kayla Collins rounds out the field for regional Australia. Again, remember that these results are done by classification, not necessarily first over the line, but in the centre of the track. Uh, Carly Simmons on the Vision Impaired Athletes running with her guide. And over on the inside of the track as well from Nauru, Janita Dow. Very neck and neck, the two of them across the line. She ran a really nice race. She, she strode nicely. The start was a little bit slow, and that's what we're really working on at the moment, and it's, it's her reaction time getting there. I think she'll probably be a little bit disappointed with the time. I think it might have been in the 16s and she's trying to get into the 15s. My start was a bit slow. I think part of it was the fact that my toes curled up a bit too much and so I couldn't get a lot of flatness on that foot to start with. So I just couldn't get push off as easily. But apart from that, you know, it was a race. <laughs> Day four, and it's the shot putters who are competing today. It's a big day for Benza. He's looking to put the B qualifier. If he makes the mark, he'll be funded to go to the world champs. Right, minutes, I suppose getting psyched is a learning process for me. I sing songs in my head to calm my nerves. That's what I do, I dance inside my head, but um, I actually found that I need to get angry. My coach knows that, so he spits a little spiel to get me a little bit angry, Hulk-like, I suppose, but to clear my mind is, um, is just not to overthink it, really. There's some big puts being thrown from Benz's competitors. He's feeling the pressure. You just worry about that fella called Ben to him, Sebi. Sounds good to me. Ben's put is 30 centimetres short of the B qualifier for world champs. And if you got a B qualifier at 12.30, you would have saved him $5,000 in raising money to go away. So he's disappointed that. He threw a 12.70 at training the other day. But that's training and that's competition. And this is his first major competition. We've got to realise that this guy hasn't competed outside of New Zealand before. And it's different. We train to, to throw or we train to to be the best at that we can, but we don't train to compete. And to do that, we need to get into more competitions. It's just experience. He'll get better and better. Amy has already qualified for the world champs. Here, it's all about technique and finding ways to gain those precious millimetres. I've just started rotation this year. I'm using glides to give myself a safe throw and then playing around with rotations. That's still got a lot of fine tuning to do, but it's, it's what will work for me in the long run. Lisa is here without her coach and sister, Valerie. The Rotorua single mum is not letting the distraction affect her. We prepped this, you know, we knew my sister couldn't come. So I had trained with Scott in Auckland before this comp. We just took about well, like a minimal technical stuff and asked for one or two work-ons and then you yeah, just find something to laugh about. Lisa, followed by Amy. Psychology is a big part of shot put. Focusing your thoughts is critical. No mental psych, nah. You're there for, for a reason, you know, you just thought. It's 10 minutes between each throw. So it's like having a baby. Like, having contractions. You're in labour, everything's so tight and you're so tense. 
and then after it, like after you've had your baby, it's kind of like really euphoric, and then you have the come down, and then your body's just aching. It exceeded my expectations of what I was aiming to do. Can't be a world record, that there's no drug testers here. And yeah, that's part of the process, you've got to get drug tested. So I think you can call it a world lead. The way she's training and preparing now under the guidance of Valerie is um, phenomenal. I think that she's going to have an outstanding world championships and Paralympics. It's been a wonderful week here in Townsville. Each and every one of the athletes has performed beyond what I expected. Less than six months out from World Champs, and any time an athlete succeeds, you're really, really happy. But when they succeed and they've done a best PB, or some of them have got closer to World Champs rankings and World League performances, New Zealand records, it's great. Oh yes, Mama Bear's very proud. <laughs>